Kim at Foggy Bonnet. Just two quick announcements. Um, from now through the end of May, through May 31st, there's a sign-up special going on. It's called Join Plus, and it's an additional um, $30 worth of product included in your starter kit. Normally you get $125 worth of product in your starter kit, anything you want to choose um, for just $99. And uh, right now, through the end of May, you get $155 worth of product for just $99. And shipping is always free on the starter kits, so that's like an additional 10% savings. The other special that's running right now is the, um, it's called Connect create and collect. It's kind of a, a mouthful, but basically it's an additional $25 in Stampin' Rewards when you place a $250 order or if you have a $250 class. And if you're interested in that, that's running through June 14th. I am doing virtual classes. I have limited dates for that, but if you have a few friends and you want to do a Zoom with me, um, do connect with me. You can reach me at foggybonnet at gmail.com foggybonnet at gmail.com almost forgot my email address. So those are the two specials we have going on right now and I'm kind of anxious to jump into this project that I have for you tonight. It's a shaker card and I don't think I've ever done a shaker card on my uh, Facebook Live. So I'm going to flip the camera around. The stamp set that I'm using tonight is this new Pirates and Mermaids um, set. Terrific if you have grandchildren. It has a little mermaid and the pirate, a little treasure chest, and ahoy there matey. You're a treasure. It's your birthday and you're so mermazing. That's a little play on the word mermaid. And the card that I'm making tonight is a direct case from the catalog. I took an idea from the catalog and kind of changed up the colors and this is it. It's a little shaker card. All right, so first I'm gonna rattle off the pieces, tell you what, what I cut and how I cut it. I use the um, layering circles die set for this and I'll be giving you the dimensions of the dies that I used. So I started with a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base and then my first layer on this card is cut to four by five and a quarter and the circle in the middle is cut with a two and three eighths inch circle from the layering circles die set. This is the smooth um, circle. The layering dies have scalloped edges and smooth sides. So for this piece, I use the two and what did I say? Two and five eighths is what this measures across to cut a circle right smack dab in the middle of this piece and this piece is four by five and a quarter okay then i cut three three and a half inch square pieces of thick basic white this is thick basic white and i'll talk about why uh, when we use these and in the middle of each of these i cut that same size circle with the two and five eighths inch um, smooth side die. Okay, so all three of these have that die cut in the center. Don't worry too much about like measuring the exact middle of these. I didn't measure these, I just eyeballed them and you'll see when we put this together how it all works. Then I have a three and one half inch square of designer series paper and this is actually the back of one of the, what is this called, the fine art floral paper. And that's what I used in the background here. 
These are kind of strange colors maybe for a mermaid type card, but I based my color choices on these little shaker bits that I have. These are called shaker shapes and they come in, let's see, the three colors in here I think are granny apple green, that might be magenta madness, and then some kind of bright yellow. I forget which yellow it is. This is in the current catalog. So when I was picking out my colors, since I knew I wanted to use these shaker bits or shaker shapes, um, that's what I based my cardstock colors and everything else on. And this is three and a half by three and a half. I also have a piece of three and a quarter by three and a quarter uh, polished pink. And this is what I cut this ring with, the scalloped ring. And I'm, while I have this out, I'm just going to show you how I line this stuff up. I put the scalloped um, die down first, and this scallop die is three inches across. This is the three inch diameter scallop die. And I just lay it on there, and then I place the two and five eighths smooth circle inside of it, okay? And I just, I look at the space between the two dies to get them even, and then I get a piece of washi tape and I have learned from experience that um, you don't want your washi tape too sticky. When I cut the circle out of this piece, I put the washi tape on the inside in here. I didn't put it out here because I knew I was this would show on my card, whereas this piece could be a throwaway piece. So when you're putting your washi tape on, um, put it on the part that's going to get thrown away just in case the washi tape tears your cardstock. So that's how I secure these two dies and I cut them both at the same time and that's how I made this ring. Okay, this is the three inch scallop and the two and five eighths smooth circle. And I already have this cut just to save time but I wanted to show you how I set it up. And then my sentiment is on a just under three quarters of an inch tag and trimmed with uh, the banner year punch. Okay, and we'll talk about that as we go along. The first thing I did was glue these three pieces together. And again, this is basic white thick. So I just started with one of them and I just went around and I, I don't want a lot of glue on this. I don't want it squishing out. So I'm just going around the opening here. And I'm going to take the next one and just lay it down and I'm going to line up the opening. I'm not going to line up these edges. These edges aren't, um, the circles aren't going to be exactly centered on these squares so I'm focusing on the circles themselves and I'm lining those up okay and what I'm doing is I'm creating a thick little well to hold my pieces okay so I'm lining up the circle I'm not lining up the edges and you can see this is off a little bit on the edges that's fine no worries doesn't matter as long as this the inner circles are lined up. Okay, so there's one, and then I'm going to take the next one. Whoops, first I'm going to put some glue down on this one, and I'm just going to go around the perimeter of this die cut circle. And I'm going to lay this piece down. And again, I'm focusing on the circle, not on the outside edges of these squares. And I can't get right over top of my work, but I think I'm pretty close here. So what I've created is kind of a thick holding area for my shaker pieces. And one nice thing about these um, shaker shapes, 
I don't know if these are foam. They, they feel like plastic. Um, but they're kind of thick. So they're not going to slide out easily. Um, they're not going to get up underneath anything here. You could add another layer to this, but I found that three layers of the basic white thick was just about perfect for using Stampin' Dimensionals on the outside of it later on. So once I have this all glued together, I'm going to adhere it to my background, which in this case is my designer series paper, okay? Use a little bit of glue here also. You could use tear and tape here instead of the glue. And I'm just gonna pretty much center this on my designer series paper. And again, I'm not worried at all about these edges that are um, not aligned on my squares. The main thing is that the circles are lined up. Okay, now before I glued this down, I should have mentioned if by chance you have any glue that oozed out of there inside this ring, you can take a um, an embossing buddy, which is kind of full of a powder. I don't know exactly what's in these, but it's just has a powder inside and just run it around the inside of those die cut circles to get rid of the tackiness. Now inside of here, I also die cut a little piece of seaweed and I used a die from the Smooth Sailing die set. Um, love this die. It's just a, a piece of something that would grow at the bottom of the ocean. I use that die and I have already pre-cut it. And when I cut it, I used the double-sided adhesive on the back of it. And then I trimmed it with my circle die. Let me show you how I did that. I just laid circle die on the die cut so that it would fit inside. So there was some more of this seaweed down here. It's longer than this when you first die cut it. And I just trimmed it off so that now I have an edge that will fit inside the circle. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere that now. There we go. This is my take your pick tool. It's my go-to tool when I need to pick something up like that. So I'm just going to set this in here and align that die cut with the bottom of my circle here. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to put my shaker bits in. All right, so I'm just going to grab a few of these and put some inside this well that I've created with just building up layers of cardstock. That's how I made that. And I discovered today as I was playing with this that I don't want to have these two bunched up because if they get um, kind of trapped between the window sheet. I didn't show you the window sheet yet. And the background, they can get stuck. So I kind of spread them out so they're mo they can move freely in there. I have a window sheet, a piece of window sheet cut also to three and a half by three and a half inch square. And that is what's going to hold everything in place inside of here. So I'm going to put Oops, first thing I'm going to do is rub my embossing buddy on this. You could rub a, I want to get rid of static electricity, so you could rub a dryer sheet on this, just something to kind of cut down on the static electricity a little bit. And I'm going to use my stamp and seal around the edges here, and I want to be careful not to go over the edges with my stamp and seal. And I'm using stamp and seal because I can kind of control and curve with it a little bit. Oops, need to get it started. This is actually Stamp and Seal Plus. Stamp and Seal Plus. You want a really good adhesion here. You could also use tear and tape. 
Okay, so now I have my stamp and seal all the way around, and any little pieces that might be hanging over an edge, I'm just going to fold them back on itself. And now I'm just going to take my window sheet and lay it down, and it's cut to three and a half by three and a half also. I'm just going to lay it down and adhere it. And that little star is jumping up. There we go. Okay. And now my little shaker bits are in there. Okay. And they're not going to go anywhere. All right. So the next thing I want to do is a little bit of stamping on this piece. This is the four by five and a quarter inch piece with the circle cut right in the middle. And I'm going to use the stars from the little starfish stamps from the Pirates and Mermaids stamp set. And I don't know if I said, this is um, Granny Apple Green cardstock. So I'm gonna do the solid one first and I'm just gonna to do tone on tone stamping. So I'm gonna use, I use Granny Apple Green. And I'm going to stamp more like up to the right and down to the left. And one up there. Now I'm going to switch to the outline starfish. Next, I'm going to adhere my ring that I cut. And I'm just going to put drops of glue around the scallops on the back side. You could use mini glue dots, like the little glue dots that come in your paper pumpkin kit to do this but I found it just quicker, easier to just go around with little dots of glue. And again, I'm just lining up the inside of the circles, the insides of the circles. And the liquid glue gives me just a second or two to kind of move it around a little bit. And I should have had my silicone mat down I'm going to give this a second to dry pretty well. And same thing here. If you feel any tackiness, you can just take your um, embossing buddy and just run it around there to get rid of any tackiness. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to adhere this to my little shaker element. Okay. And I am going to use tear and tape for this. And I found today when I was playing with these that just a few pieces around was plenty to hold this to the element, to the shaker element. So I'll just give those a rub to adhere them to the window sheet and then just peel off the backings. I want to make sure that I have this oriented correctly. I want the seaweed to be growing up from the bottom and have this oriented correctly. And I'm just going to line up my window opening with the well that's holding the little bits. It's pretty good. And just tack it down like that. Okay, and then this gets adhered to the card front. And I wanted to support these um, outside edges. And I was talking about um, the layers. I think you could get away with an additional layer of this thick cardstock and still be even with the Stampin' Dimensionals. Um, I chose three layers because then you also have the background and the window sheet in there too. So it seemed to be pretty level when I put the Stampin' Dimensionals on with three layers. Um, you could experiment with that. So I'm just going to support these outer. edges. So I'm just lining up bottom, right, and left sides. 
So the center is supported by all those layers of the shaker element, and then these outer edges are supported by those um, Stampin' Dimensionals. So next, the fun part of um, coloring our mermaid, and I'm going to just kind of give you a quick demonstration. I won't color all of her because I have one already prepared, but I just want to show you how I arrived at these colors. Okay, so this is light, soft, succulent. And I colored some of her um, scales on her fin here. Or what do you call this part of the mermaid? <laughs> I don't even know. So I didn't color all of them. I just colored some randomly. Okay. You can see up here the dark ones were where I put this soft succulent. But then I went back in with... This is Dark Mango Melody, and I colored the other scales, but I also went over where I had put the soft succulent, and that turned it kind of a, a pretty, I don't know, kind of turquoise -y color. Okay, like that. Yeah. And there we go, like that. Okay, so that's how I did her her tail. We'll call it a tail, right? Is that what it is? Oh, and her hair, well, I have the light mango, mel or the, I'm sorry, this is dark mango melody. Dark mango melody. I put a few streaks of this in her hair. Just here and there, a streak of this mango melody. And then I came in with Oh, this is light cinnamon cider, and then did the rest of her hair with it. Okay, so again, I'm not going to do all of the coloring. I just wanted to show you how I got some of these colors. That's how I did her hair. The new um, pale papaya is great for skin tones. Um, this is actually the dark pale papaya. I'm, I'm sure the light would work too, but I happen to use the dark. So I just went in with a layer of this. And then I took um, light Calypso Coral and did her cheeks with this. And I thought that was cute. And then her flower was um, light polished pink. You can see I colored that. And the leaves were light old olive, the leaves around her flower. So like I said, I'm not gonna color the whole thing. I just wanted to show you how I arrived at my colors. And here she is, all finished, ready to pop onto the card. There are not coordinating dies for this set. But I found that these were fairly easy to cut out. Everyone knows I'm not a fan of fussy cutting, but these were pretty simple to do, and I didn't mind um, cutting them out. So I'm going to pop her up on dimensionals over here, and then my sentiment is going to go up here, and we'll talk about the sentiment in a second. Here we go. And then the sentiment, you are so mermazing. Love that. Um, I stamped this with, I actually used Magenta Madness. I liked how it looked. It popped a little more than the polished pink. And I wrapped it with, um, um, oh, it's from the Forever Greenery Trim Pack, which is retired. But there's a similar product in the current catalog it's the Simply Elegant trim. It has a gold thread. It might be a little thicker than this. I actually wrapped this around three times and just put a little bit of Stampin' Seal Plus on the back to catch it and then put a couple of Stampin' Dimensionals on it. And I trimmed the ends. I think I mentioned earlier, I trimmed the ends of this with the Banner Year Punch. Okay, so she has a little bit of bling here with the gold red 
and I just kind of set this at an angle. I just have two dimensionals on the back of that and set it at an angle. And there we go. You are so amazing. Cute. Okay. So that's that one and then I made another one today because I wanted to make one for uh, using that pirate oh I forgot oh and I don't here it is I always want to put a liner in a card that has a solid color in a solid color card base like this and I do have my liner cut I like to cut mine to three and three quarters by five okay and I would adhere that inside so the other one that I made today with our little pirate is this guy. Now I didn't have the cute little shapes in these colors, but what I did is I pulled some gold sequins out of an old um, sequence pack. I Believe it or not, I think this was the old Poppy's um, sequence, but a lot of our sequins have little gold pieces in. You could pull them out. And then I just cut with a hole punch, I cut some, I think this is bumblebee. I wanted it to look like coins in there. And I used the same process that I used on this card. Um, but on this one, I added um, this element on the outside of the window. I have a piece of seaweed on the inside. If I had to do it over again, I'd probably make that green. And then this one, the navy, one is on the outside and I just pop the treasure chest up over here and the little pirate is popped up on dimensionals. I just think these are adorable and any kid would probably love receiving one of these. And this one I set on an angle as you can see instead of straight. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project. You can find the Pirates and Mermaids stamp set on page 58 of the new annual catalog, the 21-22 annual catalog. You'll find shopping links in the description of this video. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to my channel. That way you'll be able to find future videos more easily. Thanks again for watching. I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.